Hello everyone, Matthew here on the channel. Uh, we're back with another Hawkeye breakdown. Uh, last week we missed an episode, so this this week is going to be four and five. Two pretty pretty cool episodes, pretty big episodes. Um, and I can't believe the show's nearly over. It's crazy. I think it was confirmed it was only six episodes, Callum, which is kind of devastating. I'm really enjoying it so far, and it's going to be over in a couple of days. Um, we're recording this on the Monday, so literally uh, in less than forty eight hours, the show will be over. Really, um, I think so. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll pass over to you, mate, to explain what's been going on in the in the show recently. Then, yeah, it is strange that there's only one episode left because there are a lot of a lot of things to be explained, a lot of boxes to be ticked. We need to understand Eleanor Bishop's connection with Kingpin. Mm-hmm. Uh, we need to know what Kingpin has been doing and his relationship with Echo. Uh, we need to find out if Jack is villainous or whether that was just a complete misdirect. Uh, we need to find out who killed Armand. We need to find out. Who killed Echo's dad? We need to find out, uh, you know, what it is that, you know, what moment leads to the reconciliation between Hawkeye and Yelena. Uh, Who's on and the then Rolex? We need to, Who's is the Rolex? Yeah, yeah, and then and then we need to get, uh, yeah, we need to know what what's what's going on with the watch, and then we need to get Hawkeye back with his family. So, Fuck. that that's that's a lot to cover in forty five minutes, and sure I feel like, I feel like the last two episodes that we've seen have been, they felt sim- simultaneously rushed and like you know breakneck edited while simultaneously having nothing happen in them uh because you know we we watched the uh, episode five maybe th- like four days ago uh and i didn't take notes at the time because i was sort of just watching it on my work break and i didn't i didn't have any any anywhere to, to put notes uh but I, I tried to muster up some notes for today and i could i could think of two yeah i'm saying both of them are big old criticisms. Uh, so in number four, uh, we we sort of get the, you know, at least at least the end point is the division between uh, Hawkeye and Kate Bishop. Uh, you know, we see them being being partners throughout the episode. Uh, them trying to track down where that where this watch is, uh, and then they find they finally find it in Echo's apartment, uh, which then leads to a fight on a rooftop with the discovery that Yelena is actually after him which then carries over into episode five, uh, where there's the, this confrontation between Yelena and Kate, uh, where Yelena comes to Kate's apartment and they, they have a back and forth. Uh, and then, you know, with a, a, a poorly developed reconciliation between Kate, uh, Kate and, uh, and Clint, uh, that, that's sort of how the episode wraps up with a, with a big reveal, which we shall not spoil uh, until we, we give a big old spoiler warning uh, and say, don't watch this video unless, you have, unless you've seen episode five which I imagine you probably have if you give a shit because uh, it has been out a while. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're, we're a few episodes away, as, as you said, from episode six. And I'm, I'm very excited because I think uh, the standard that was set by episodes one to three was so high uh, that, you know, it sort of it earned a little bit of a dip in episode four, I thought. Uh, I think episode five is, is for the most part strong. It's just what I find memorable, memorable about it were the criticisms. Uh, but that doesn't mean it wasn't a strong episode. Uh, so I'm just, I'm really hoping for that blockbuster finale. Yeah, I think, I think you're absolutely spot on there. The main crux of, of these episodes is really Yelena. Like she gets a lot of screen time here, which is great to see. Um, I, you know, I think from our review of Black Widow, um, a number of months ago now, that was, she was probably our standout character, at least one of our favorites. I really like what Florence Pugh is doing there. I saw she also got banned, like she got like removed from Instagram or something because she like, Mm. uh, posted, uh, like, you know the trailer of the episode on her story or something then like people people thought she was spoiling it or something i'm not sure what happened but yeah, um she, she posted she posted uh the whole fight scene and like her reacting to it so like it was it was her videoing the screen that was playing the fight scene and her going like yeah yeah get him yeah punch him oh <laughs> oh he just dodged that kick kick him again you know like she was, she was yeah. like commentating over it uh and i suppose if you're if you're doing that quite close to the quite close to the release i mean i understand that some people might get up in arms about that but everybody knew she was in it and there is no question of who he's fighting when you watch it so when when that hood comes off you're like yeah obviously Mm -hmm. uh you know so i i think it's it's very unreasonable to to get her in trouble for that yeah yeah i think you're right you know i think the main question i had for episode four you know admittedly i don't have a lot of notes on it but it was really this mystery behind the rolex watch i think it's it's certainly Mm -hmm. elaborated upon in five where I think we probably think it's Hawkeye's wife's, uh, you know, watch or has some some kind of um, 
clue to her past, uh, maybe crime fighting or with Shield, who's to say. Like I said, there's a lot to wrap up in the, in the, in the finale, mate. I didn't realize how long. I mean, there, I saw an announcement uh, a couple of days ago saying it's going to be close to an hour long, which is good, but still, that's a lot. That's a lot of stuff to wrap up in 60 minutes. Yeah, you know, I think with this watch, you know, my, my initial reaction in episode four was that he must be talking about his wife. Uh, but he says that, you know, there's secrets on the watch with details to this undercover, uh, you know, this undercover superhero. So either, you know, he he means that, you know, it's a it's a non-powered superhero and that it is his wife, which would make sense because, you know, where where else is he meeting his wife? He doesn't seem to have, uh, you know, an extensive social life. So it, it would have sort of made sense uh, if, if he met her in the field. But then why does Kingpin care about getting evidence on Hawkeye's wife? Like, is he doing it as revenge for... Hawkeye trying to take down the tracksuit mafia uh, or, you know, is it just completely unrelated and we're, you know, we've had some kind of massive misdirect. Uh, I mean, I don't see why he would be vengeful toward, towards Hawkeye for trying to take down the tracksuit mafia. If it was him, you know, if it, if it was Kingpin himself that like snitched out where they were going to be uh, in order for seemingly Hawkeye to kill Echo's dad. Is, is that confirmed that he did that in episode five? It's kind of unclear because he says that he was there. And, you know, obviously uh, what we hear of what Hawkeye says is through the subtitles uh, that, that we see uh, from the perspective of, of Maya. So we, we know that he says he was there and that he was there because he was tipped off by, uh, by an informant who worked for Kingpin, which the presumption is that that was Kazi because he was, uh, Echo's dad's number two uh, and you know he was one of the few people that didn't attend the meeting so that, that's sort of the, the inference that they make in, in episode five but I, I just don't think that they would have actually shown Hawkeye doing like a bloodthirsty kill of like a seemingly nice man uh, or at least in you know how he's presented in, in episode three I believe it was so like how, how, how do you feel do you, do you think he did kill Echo's dad the theory that it was Jack Duquesne, as Ronan certainly held ground for the first three episodes, I feel, but since since really episode four and, and five here, I, I feel like nice boy. he seems like a nice guy. Like, I think that is going to be a misdirect. So I'm not sure whether that is going to be, you know, I, I would love it if they if they somehow brought back like Electra or something and said, oh, it was Electra dresses Ronan, as crazy as that may be. You know, I know they, you know, We'll, we'll mention other characters that they've brought back from other shows, but it's not out of the realm of possibility for them to bring back other characters. Um, I'm you know I'm not too sure what what it, what they're going to do with it. I think this Eleanor, um, saga with uh you know with her being potentially the villain here, I think that's you know that's going to be the main you know source of of you know an, an antagony really. There, I think she's going to be the really main antagonist. I think as well with with Jack Dickey and like there's that, that, that storyline it's i feel like it's, it's, it's on a road to nowhere like you either reveal that he's just a good guy or you reveal that he's you know just uh you know in in line with eleanor and they're both you know not not good you know i feel like the time to reveal a twist was maybe in episode four or if not latest episode five like to reveal all these things in, in the final episode i feel like is going to be quite risky to get everything you know nicely molded together and to, to feel like everything's fully fleshed out I feel, I feel like they can do it because I'm really enjoying the show so far um it's just that like you said a lot happens in this episode in these episodes but simultaneously nothing happens you know like I said it is very much you know Yelena's stuff and then that's it really for the most part yeah and it really you know this has really carved out the fact that the universal constant in these shows is you know, an incredibly predictable quote unquote twist. Uh, you know, in this case, it's that Eleanor is actually evil, obvious from episode one. Uh, you know, in Loki, it was that the Time Masters were fake and that it was Kang behind it. One division, it was that it was Agatha all along. Uh, you know, we, we just keep getting these agonizingly obvious twists. Uh, you know, Sharon, Sharon uh, Carter being the power broker, you know, these like, intended oh shit moments that you were like yeah you know <laughs> like obviously the most mainstream of you could 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 you know obviously understand that you know it has mm. nothing to do with me being like you know as a as a clued in viewer Detective. i was i was able to, to <laughs> ascertain this yeah you know because i because my mastery of, of reading the clues <laughs> it's like no it's like vera farmiga was told to act as a villain so she's like hamming it up as as a villain 
you know, j- just like is the case with Sharon Carter as the power broker. Uh, so I-, I just need them to retire that, uh, you know, either don't do twists or actually surprise us. Um, and I, I do th- I do kind of hope that Jack is just a good guy uh, because, you know, if, if you have Eleanor being the uh, being a, you know, a villain, you don't need them both to be. And I suppose that at least establishes kind of a misdirect, like, you know, that you can kind of be like, okay, I see what they were doing with trying to present him as being potentially villainous. And then actually, you know, having be just Eleanor, you know, I at least thought it was both of them were evil. Uh, So, I mean, at least that would be a semblance of a, of a, okay, that, that, that's a bit surprising. And, you know, you would have to be like astronomically stupid to actually list yourself as the CEO of a company that, that launders money for the tracksuit mafia. I was going to mention like, that. Like, like it I, seems like he's just I wrote, an idiot. Like I wrote in my episode four notes uh, before we found out that it seems Eleanor stitched him up. You know, I said, use an alias, have a scapegoat. But it seems that in this case, he was Eleanor's scapegoat. So that actually, it does line up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was going to mention that. I mean, it seems like he's the CEO of this loan limited that's, you know, has connections to... The, the big bad of the show it, it appears so he's connected in some capacity although i think you're probably right there's probably eleanor stitching off as the most likely reason i i struggle to see where echo fits into this because obviously you know her dad is the one who was you know killed by ronan although we were sort of clued us as to who this ronan was. was was it you know clint barton was it jack decane was it eleanor <laughs> you know he knows um I think if that is, it's either not going to, either they're never going to touch it in this up in the final episode, or they're going to have to say, you know, it was Jack or whatever, because they can't say it was Clint Barton, can they? I mean, it makes sense with, with Avengers Endgame, you know, we see that he is ruthless, you know, he's killing the Yakuza guys and he's clearly, you know, out, out for vengeance, but I don't know, it seems like that was kind of salt and a nice sort of tender moment for the Echo character and um, it would have been quite vicious for Clint Barton just to, you know, kill someone like that i don't know it maybe, maybe i'm wrong yeah because i mean obviously we you know we as an audience member can forgive him because we know that the guy was ultimately you know probably a, a you know a very dangerous morally corrupt criminal mm-hmm. uh so we can we can see hawkeye's perspective but i just think having him hooded and you know not showing the audience's face is suspicious you know a, a suspicious way to frame it mm-hmm. i mean obviously Maya needed to watch it without knowing that Clint was running, so it makes sense that he was wearing a mask. But I just think for the sake of the audience, they would have clued us in by this point explicitly if it was him. Uh, but then yeah. if it's not Jack, who is it? Uh, and I hope that we get those answers next week. 100%, mate, 100%. Um, do you have any more comments in episode four? Just a couple here. Uh, I'm glad that, you know, when... Kate makes the connection that he is in fact Ronan, a fact which she seems to have known for a while, uh, because you know she's not stupid. You know she's a, she's a very intelligent character, and I think her sort of whimsy and her like practical incompetence in some cases uh, sort of takes away from that. Uh, but you know she she is she's a very intelligent character, so for her not to have realized that would have disappointed me. So I'm, I'm glad that she realized that, yeah. and I'm glad that she didn't Agreed. feel a level of betrayal. Like I I was worried that, that was going to be where their partnership ended, where she goes, oh, I can't believe that you were Ronan and you killed these bad See, guys. Yeah. I thought you were, I thought you were a hero, Clint. And then he'd have to win her over. I thought that was maybe where it was going. And I'm glad it wasn't. Yeah, I'm, I'm in full agreement. So that's, that's quite an overused trope, I feel, these days. So I, I think Kelly Seinfeld is amazing as, as, as this character. Like, she's definitely the highlight of the show for me, without a doubt. Mm-hmm. We, we've, we've talked about, you know, their breakup. Uh, or you know the the break of their up the breakup of their partnership and it was uh it was essentially you know the conclusion to that extended fight scene uh, at the end of episode four and I'd just like to talk about it for a brief moment far too long and some of the worst editing uh in, in really the MCU. see I feel like for Yelena's return it was it was maybe a bit anticlimactic like I, I feel like I mean, it's definitely, uh, you know, one of the, the biggest scenes in the show so far because all these characters are kind of meeting for the first time. I think Echo's involved, isn't she? And obviously Yelena, Kate Bishop and Clint Barton. So they're all like, come, I, mean, I don't think it'll be the last time we see that. Like, I, th- I feel like their sides will be drawn in the final episode. But 
Um, I wasn't a huge fan. I, I'm really not big fans of of fight scenes set at night where you can't really tell what the fuck's going on. You can't. I mean, it's not really a a, a a fault that this one has, but I don't know. I just I just didn't think it was choreographed as as well as it could have been. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's probably some of the most chaotic editing that we've seen since you know the I'll last of the it, Russo like, brother films. Yeah. Like the Russo brother films, at least for action sequences, are just kind of you know horrendous to watch at least you know when it comes to specifically a lot a lot of the cases black widow's fight scenes because obviously she's not shooting any you know well i mean she, she has you know the the tasers on, on her wrist but she's not really like shooting projectiles from a distance or flying or you know she like she she, she doesn't have any like long range kind of stuff so hers is often you know tight and you know it's doing flips and kicks and stuff around the neck and you know a, a lot of the time the, the editing just you know do, does doesn't match up to the quality of the choreography yeah i think that's a fair assessment of it definitely and you know surely uh, yelena is meant to be you know this you know li- little sister annoying quirky vibe uh but she's not stupid so the fact that she has this you know shoot first ask questions later approach to dealing with clint is just bizarre because you know, I don't know why you would kill someone that you know to be your sister's best friend just on the word of someone else, on mm-hmm. someone that you know that you can't trust. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, it's already a massive coincidence that she happens to be to be hired and paid by, uh, you know, by by Kate's mother to kill Clint Barton when she already had it like in her back pocket that she wants to kill him anyway for the alleged part that he played in in Natasha's death. So I mean, things have kind of just really lined up for her there. But you know, I don't, I don't know why she would take it on faith that he had something to do with it when she, when his public persona is hero and best friend to, to her sister. Like I don't, I don't know why you would take the word of all these like shady figures. Is it still anonymous as to who hired her at this point, um, or is it like, is it, it's, it's, it's clear that it's like the big bad of the show is revealed in season in episode five. Uh, it was revealed in in the text at the end of episode five uh, that it was Eleanor that hired her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think. And then it was, mm. uh, you know, like she she texted Kate to say, "Your mom hired me," and here's a picture of her with Kingpin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think. Did you want to? Did you want to move into that? Uh, to the Kingpin stuff. Sure, I have I have one other point about episode five, uh, but if you wanted to do Kingpin first, I, I can leave that to the end because it is a yeah, okay. a big old criticism. Well, let's do it because we 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 met up to see Spider Man the day of the episode. Uh, what a what a day for Marvel content, by the way. Like as much as maybe um, there's we have criticisms for all these things, like to have Kingpin return in in Hawkeye, to have you know. Uh, Spoiler alert for, for Spider-Man, no way home here, uh, to have Daredevil rock up in Spider-Man and to have this, all the Spider-Man and stuff. What a day for Marvel content. I mean, I'm not sure canonically what would have been the first character to be introduced uh, from Netflix into the, mo- into the movies. Is it, is it Vincent D'Onofrio? Uh, is, is... It depends whether you take uh, you know, the premiere date of uh, Spider-Man yes. no way home as the release date, or if you take the perspective of America is the only place that matters, which is uh, a lot of people's attitude. So, you know, uh, that there would be, I, I think they would then say that Kingpin uh, was first. Uh, but I would say, you know, it, it premiered, like Spider Man No Way Home premiered, uh, you know, a few days before the Wednesday uh, that we saw it. And also screenings were available on that day before, uh, before Hawkeye came out. So I, I would back the fact that the Daredevil was the first one. That's interesting. Yeah, I think I think so. I, I want to get the positives out of the way first. I love the 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 costume, like the suit for a start. And I think he's got his white suit, doesn't he? With like uh, mm-hmm. the black shirt and he's and got the cane. the cane. He's got the cane. Now that's the big one for me. Um, and it seems like they've packed on a bit of size to him. Um, you know, mm-hmm. I'm not sure that was intentional or to make him more comic accurate, Kingpin. I mean, the last version of Kingpin we saw was probably in the movies or TV was probably Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. And that's like a really Hulk, Hulk-like Hulk Kingpin who like, you know, throws trains and shit. Like, obviously that's not what Vincent Norrie is going for. But um, he looks a bit different. We, I he still hasn't got the ascot. If you're going to give him the cane, give him the ascot. I think, I think so. I wanted to comment as well. 
I think we both agreed. What a silly way to reveal him. Maybe not silly, but what a strange way on you know on a blurry photograph rather than you know a scene. Yeah. You know, I think they could have played that scene out in person. Like if you yeah, if you want to build tension, you have Hawkeye say, "Well, that's the guy I was worried about." Then you introduce his theme from the Daredevil TV show. Then you show the back of his head. Then you hear over you know uh, Clint saying "Kingpin" with then the shot panning to the front of his face. And then you get, you know, that 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 full reveal. And then you're like, Whoa, oh my God, it's Vincent D'Onofrio Kingpin. Who saw that coming? Uh, you know, you, you get that moment. Mm-hmm. But instead, it's just, oh, that's the guy I was worried about, Kingpin. Terrible photo. <laughs> you know, uh, hardly discernible as to whether it's even Vincent D'Onofrio. And then, you know, it, it is confirmed in the credits. But you're like, okay, I mean, that, you know, that could be any guy that looks like a bit of a, a shriveled up brazen. Because, like, he doesn't look quite right. Like, I think they've they've either done, like, either it's just a terrible, terrible photo and they've made it, like, super grainy on purpose, you know, as though Juliana has, like, a phone from the early 2000s. Uh, you know, either it's super grainy, grainy intentionally or they've done some, some kind of CGI or prosthetics to his face to sort of naturally mold the, you know, the, the more of the bulk that they've added to him. Because uh, Vincent D'Onofrio isn't the si- isn't actually the size of the kingpin in the, in that photo. I still feel like Vincent D'Onofrio has the stature and the and the presence of kingpin just normally. Like I don't think kingpin needs to be like Spider Man animated series. Like only two percent of my body is fat. Let you, let me feel. Let me show you what ninety eight percent of muscle feels like. Whatever. Like it's it doesn't have to be. It. <laughs> That's my kingpin impression from the Spider Man animated mm, series. It. Thank you. I, I was rewatching something. Kingpin scenes from Daredevil. What is his accent? I think it's because like it, his it's like his father sounds like he's New like York. from the old west. He's like he's like oh Willie, Willie my my my, Willie my, Fisk. my boy. My boy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like Willie no, <laughs> and then and then you know Kingpin is I I don't know he has, he has sort of the the you know the weird like nineteen forties you know transatlantic accent that you know uh, the the actors would do back in the day you know where mm. where they would have like in you know, an anglified uh, or an anglicized, I, I don't, uh, you know, I don't mean, yeah. uh, American accent. And you'd be like, w- when we watch that now, we're like, what is this? Kingpin's still one of my favorite Marvel villains, I think. Especially the, I, I love, it's not often I'd love two completely different versions of the character, but I, I love this animated series version, but also the live action and the version just as much as each other. Also, like, the Michael Clark Duncan version from, from Daredevil 2003 is pretty, pretty great as well. I've heard, I've heard he's pretty good. I, I definitely have heard that. I also quite, I, I also quite like Liv, Liv Schreiber as, uh, as him. And, but I don't think it's a character that they've ever done badly, actually. Um, yeah, I think it's certainly a worth... Like, I'm glad they actually revealed it. Don't get me wrong. I'm just disappointed in the way they did it. I'm, I'm hoping he's going to get some decent screen time in the final episode maybe like five or ten minutes i hope um i'm not sure if we'll see a lot of them but um i'm, I'm holding out and yeah him being on the show like why would you f- wait five episodes to reveal this and then do it like that like why why would you do that like it's meant to return you know represent this like turning point in the history of the mcu mm-hmm. uh you know and and it's just shit like you know even, yeah, even if is. that was a character that we had never seen before if it was like Oh, that's the guy I was worried about, and then you know it just turned out to be some other villain from from the Marvel canon that like we're kind of familiar with, but this is their MCU introduction. That would still be a terrible reveal, you know. If you have either like you know a significant character or a significant actor playing an insignificant character, you need to you need to make full use of that. Like you need yeah, to, without doubt, you need to ham up that reveal massively. Yeah, uh, without doubt. Yeah, without doubt. Um, what was your point on the on on season five? Oh, sorry, season five, episode five that you wanted to mention as well. So the, this this is my big gripe with it, and it's something that I mentioned uh to you uh the other day. What, what, you know, after after we'd spoken to it, uh after we we had both seen it and we we spoke about it on, on the way to see Spider Man, and it's that they just absolutely robbed blind Killing Eve, uh because Killing Eve in Killing Eve, I believe it's in season one. Uh, there's a scene shared between Sandra Oh and Jodie Comer. Jodie Comer is playing uh, a quirky Russian assassin who, mm, who comes to the familiar. house of the of the woman that she's after and cooks her and cooks her pasta and they eat it together over a tense meal where she's like cracking jokes and then 
uh, you know, that the woman is like scared of her. It's it's the same scene. Like they've just absolutely robbed Killing Eve Blind, and I haven't heard anyone mention it. And I was just watching, and I was like, she's even like chowing down on pasta. Like, like how did they get away with this? I was like, how 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 did how did they do this? I've never seen the show, but there's no chance of it being intentional, or is it you know like ironic that well, they're doing that? Well, if it's intentional, it's plagiarism, and if it's unintentional. How has the entire writer's room of Hawkeye not seen Killing Eve? Well, that's that's, that's certainly, I find out quite an amusing comment, actually. Yeah, I mean, I can't believe if that is like that's the case, then why, like, how that managed to get in? Because I feel like that scene goes on for a little bit too long anyway. Um, like Yelena's Yil- yeah. got some interesting moments in this episode. I think she get the we, we show her, um, her getting snapped during the blip, which is very interesting, you know. I like I like the way the MCU is doing this, and then it's, you know each character, you know, in, in their projects, you know, you, you get a you get a glimpse of what of what life was like during the blip or how they were blipped or whatever. I'm liking that, um, and it's goes it's important because that's the most important event the MCU has done up to this point, you know, up until the multiverse really. So it makes sense that they keep going back to it. Yeah, and I mean it's a connection that half of the people in the universe share as well. Mm-hmm. So I mean it's sort of yeah. It can be, it can be, you know, very, very universally applied throughout the projects. Uh, but I didn't have anything else on the episodes. No, man. Uh, and we've sort of talked about what we expect to see from next week, or at least not necessarily what we expect to see, but what needs to happen. Like, you know, they, they've set up a very significant amount of mysteries, which is weird for a show that is clearly meant to be low-key, street-level crime-based. Uh, and, you know, six episodes. I don't know why they would then, you know, Put, put into motion like six or seven mysteries that need uh that need or you know six or seven significant plot points that either need you know reveals or development uh you know and leave them all to episode six mm-hmm. you know i maybe would have introduced yulina at the end of episode three and then had the re- had the res the, the reconciliation between them in episode five so that then she could then just be be, a, be part of the fold of taking down kingpin in episode six in episode six which is ultimately what we know is going to happen uh because because you know she, she's she's a, a, a good character in the end uh so i'm i'm just i'm just curious as to why they decided to, to, to develop that many ongoing story points yeah i, I I'm, I'm in agreement with you i had um i wanted to do ask you a question you know the the woman who is like assembling the dark avengers what's her name again mm-hmm. uh valentina I've heard a few people comment that that's potentially Wilson Fisk's new Vanessa, and like they're like this duo that's okay. assembling this team. I, I think that would be very interesting, although that would kind of ruin well, a lot of Daredevil. I would, I would ruin a lot of Daredevil because like Vanessa is one of the great characters in that show, and and Wilson Fisk's entire character development is based around that character. So it would it would be bizarre to do unless they like killed her off or something or whatever. Um, I'm not sure, but I, I, what was your thought? Like, what 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 do you think of that? Because I think it sounds pretty cool on the on the surface level like but then wouldn't really yeah work, right? i don't know how i feel about that relationship i think that vanessa being dead is the only reason that they could give for kingpin to currently be operating uh in crime in in new york because you know even if you even if they don't fully respect the canon of daredevil season three which ended with kingpin making the agreement that he would stay in prison for the rest of his life in uh, in order for Vanessa to be free, uh, because she was responsible for ordering uh, the death of Agent Nadim mm-hmm. uh, in, se- in season three of Daredevil. I was going to say spoiler warning, but I mean, come on, lads, came out three years ago. <laughs> uh, you know, if if you if you if you if you were going to watch it, you'd have seen it. Yeah. Uh, but you know that, as, as you said, his entire development in season one, you know, the the thing that brings him out of his shell and makes him a character of note is Vanessa. And then she takes on a, a more villainous position in season three. Uh, and she sort of becomes, you know, uh, on a par with him in terms of moral corruption. So for her to just be ignored is bad and would not ruin the character, but would really disrespect the development in Daredevil, especially in season three. But if you kill her, that does solve a few things uh, because that, that, again, as I said, would explain why he's why he's uh, willing to operate in crime again. I mean, it's possible, you know, that she got snapped or something and then he, and he didn't. So, uh, and, you know, maybe Daredevil got snapped as well. So he, so he was like, 
okay, well, there goes, you know, my reason for staying in prison and the person who wants to keep me there. Uh, so then that's why I was able to bring yeah, back his that's empire. Yeah, that's a good show. Uh, but, then it, but then, you know, you would think that Daredevil would, would hunt him down as soon as he was back. Mm. I, I can't wait to see where they go with it, man. I really can't. Um, any more remarks from you? Nothing else for me, Matthew. Well, that wraps up another um, Hawkeye uh, review. Stay tuned um, very soon, a few days, for our review of the finale. Um, depending on how good it is or how much they introduce or uh, answer questions, it might be a podcast, I'm not sure. But yeah, having a really good time with this show so far. So um, and we appreciate your support. So thanks very much for your time, Cal. I appreciate it. Thanks very much for your, for your time. And be sure to keep liking, subscribing, commenting, sharing, all that great stuff. Uh, it means a lot to us here. And um, yeah, enjoy yourselves over the Christmas break. And uh, yeah, see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.